the box we put in. Yeah, we have the LB over there where the line was drilled in. Uh, comes across here and then it was left spliced at the pole right here. Not too bad. Definitely a couple deficiencies here that I would have done differently, but. Okay. Oh, we have a little bit of a lake crossing. <laughs> so we have our aerial here. Is that a strand? I'm plan planning to take that one tree out. And yeah, it looks like a strand. Out. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Bzz. So we have from here to a green pole down there. This is easily a 70 meter span, probably longer, 80 meters maybe. Say. Pole to pole. Probably 70 meter spans from here to there. So two, 140. And then we have one long span that goes back that way. Probably another 70, 80 meters. You probably can't see them, but we've got Western painted turtles in there. Oh, do you? Yeah. Sweet. They just kind Some of turkeys over there? Turkeys on yeah. yeah. Something like 80 of them. Damn. They set up about 10 at the camp this morning. Oh, did you? Yeah, wow. You'll see them probably. Yeah. So here's the second pole here. Okay. Looks like it's in decent condition. They'll probably climb these poles. Gonna have to knock test these, but yeah, I'm not gonna haul my ladder out here. I'll just climb this pole. Not too bad. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Have a little herd of turkeys right there. What do you call it? A flock of turkeys? What do you call them? Um, yeah, I guess a flock. But because they're always walking. You know. Yeah. Here we have up in the trees. Uh, mama and baby cow. This calf was just born today. <laughs> Super cute. The important thing is, of course, that the two of them connect. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, uh, Hello. And then, of course, critical that they get first milk. Mm -hmm. She and looks healthy. Left over there. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's like Discovery Channel. <laughs> awesome. Hello. Welcome to the world. <laughs> you probably know this, but cows often will eat the afterbirth. Yeah. In fact, I took a video of it and I sent it to a couple of my friends that are, that are a bit too squeamish for their own good. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Nature is a beautiful thing. Yeah. It's a boy? Or, yeah. That's actually the, the remnants of the umbilical cord, but it is. Yeah. So. Interesting. So it was just like a natural birth? Was a vet here? or? Um, yep. Uh, they were bred here. Uh, well, they got them locked away because yeah. he can be a pain in the ass time like this. Yeah. Are they like paternal or they're just like, they, they don't really care? Uh, no, they get kind of weird. Uh, they smell the blood and so they want to mate with the mother. Yeah. And uh, then they get curious. Uh, but once he's had a good suck of milk, because the first milk of colostrum, of course, it yeah. contains antibodies and uh, nutrients that it needs. But Taking its first steps. Just in, uh, How long ago was he born? Uh, at one o'clock, uh, about, I guess, four hours. Oh, wow. Fresh. So crazy how they can walk already. Oh, I mean, the healthy ones, they're up and walking like in minutes almost. Yeah. Do you have to worry about predators coming from down the hill? Uh, not once they're active. Um, we've never had an issue. I mean, cougars or coyotes or the yeah. occasional wolf uh, could take one. But the thing is, once uh, they're up and active and the mother is you know, very protective, the thing is the rest of the herd, there's, well, there's only two others, but yeah. uh, they, they bond as well and they hang together. Mm -hmm. And if the calf gives a distress call, then the whole herd comes at a gallop. Yeah. Hello. Curious cow. Interesting. Uh, Hello. 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 Interesting patterns there. It's a mix of herd and Angus. Yeah, it looks like one of those like um, those like uh, Highland cows, like with all the spots. <laughs> That's so cool. Hello. Aren't you interesting? <laughs> Good job, Mama. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you can just you can tell the healthy ones because they're they can, well, they can walk right away. They figure out how to suckle right away. Mm -hmm. And once they've had their first milk, they're pretty much bulletproof. Yeah. Awesome. Look at Mama's right on her. Oh yeah. On on him.
Damn. Cool. <laughs> yeah, they can gallop at this stage. Oh, I've really? I've had them have like, uh, well, what they'll often do, well, one of them calved up top, so I brought it down, and after a while, you know, they'd suck and they were fine and let them go. She took them back up to the, where they gave birth. Yeah. Just because, like, they, I mean, they imprint on the calf, but they mm -hmm. also imprint on where they give birth so they can find them again. Yeah. Oh, no. It's like a deer. Oh, no. You have to learn about topography yet, boy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> took a tumble. They're incredibly tough. Yeah. These are coming down? Yes. When? As soon as I talk to them, I guess. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you're... They're not really in the way that much, to be honest. Like, it looked worse than it is. Just I think from that pole to there is... I gotta go look at it from down there, but... Yeah. Um, overall, like, this span... Yeah. Um, I have a chainsaw. Like, would I be clear to just cut this if I want to come and do it, maybe? I, mean, I, I will be talking to them today, and I'll, I'll okay. mention it. And like I have my, my sure. Milwaukee pole saw, I could just limit right there just to clear this path, right? Maybe just do that for now and then I'll talk to him. And have yeah, if anything, I'll, I can just cut like these upper branches. I don't have to cut it all the way down there. I, I can just, just even uh, I have like the head trimmer attachment, yeah. cuts the one inch, but yeah, pretty long spans. I did a job similar to this in, um, in Cranbrook, and, but it was 850 meters going across like 12 poles. So it was just far and far, like field and field. Yeah. So it was it was fun. But yeah, I want to try to see. It looks like a lot of it was cut already. Yeah, I made a deal with them. I guess that stuff no. coming on your side. Well, the thing is, they were flowing over to the point where, uh, I mean, I need to work this field for hay, and uh, I just need to get rid of them. So yeah. I think the MPT is right there at that pole. So we have one span, short span 30 meters to there, and then another maybe 40, 50 meters to that pole. Then we're going across two 70 meter spans. So we got 140, put that at 40 meters ish. Yeah, 180, another 30, 210. Probably total 220 meters. Not too bad. Oh. Some mushroom cap. Hey guys, welcome back to uh, Fibers, channel where you're gonna learn how to run fiber drops. You're gonna see me do some stuff. <laughs> I have a pretty interesting one today. We're doing about a 200-ish meter aerial. I have to climb, I think, two poles. Um, I'm gonna probably ladder three of them just because of the access on them. But uh, this one has been on the docket for a while. Um, I'll probably explain as I'm working what's going on with this one, but it's actually a transitional into like a drill or a, or a dig, but that portion has been done already and um, just have to complete the aerial. They've been waiting for like two years now because it kind of got lost in the system. But uh, that being said, the MPT is here. We're going across one pole there, one more past those trees. You can't see it yet. And then we're crossing, I think it's either one or two poles across the field. Uh, there's some cows and stuff in there. Might get to see a baby cow. I have some footage of the pre-field that I did. And um, it, the cow was just born like four hours into that video. So you guys will get to see that. Here's a quick look. Not sure if I'll show this in the video, but there's the next pole right there. Then we're getting going across the one pole. And then I think it might be straight to the last pole from there. One, I think there's one more pole behind the tree. I don't know if you guys can see that. So pole there. And last pole over there. So yeah, should be a fun one. Quick and easy. Let's get to it. We'll set up here. <sighs> Hopefully on decent ground. It kind of looked like it wanted to tip over, but let's get it started. Pulling the corning end out first, the uh, off the top end. Leave that there. So we're going, I'm not sure if you guys can see, all the way down to the pole down there with the transformer. You guys will see when we get closer, but just have to get over these couple branches, up and around these branches here. Oh, it's the problem feeding off this thing from underneath. It always gets stuck.
Do, do, do. Back to the first pull, all set up, drop is uncoiled up until the fence line over there. So I'm gonna go up here, probably ladder that next pole. Um, maybe ladder that pole, I was thinking of climbing it, just because of the trees around and whatnot, but we'll see when we get there. Um, yeah, let's get her going, I'm trying to get this done. Not really feeling the best today, going through some personal stuff, but still trying to make a good video for you guys. Ooh, big kink in the drop there. Yikes, wonder what happened. Good clamp placement though, minus the waterfall clamp, but whoever did this somewhat knew what they were doing, surprisingly. Okay, so we got port two. Oh, before I forget. So we're keeping the drop roadside, but running it field side. It may sound confusing, but you can see here, it's on the front of the strand. If it was on the back side, it would be from underneath. And I want to keep it roadside so that I can transition in front of the pole, in front and above. You'll see when I get over there. Okay, got a clamp. I wonder what happened here. It looks like it slipped through the, through the wedge clamp. That's why those silver ones are no bueno. Uh, where can I put this? So when you're putting it in and there's an existing drop, you want to make sure that that one will fit into it as well. Beauty. Now just make sure my waterfall matches. Get some zip ties in here. Give you guys a better view. Remember not to zip to the tail of the MPT. Just two other drops in the waterfall. Okay, port two tagged. That kink is crazy. And the only thing I don't like about this is that they put this above. I'm not sure if I can fix it right now. Awkward. Is there any room on there? No, it's pretty tight. So normally I would want this drop to be below, not stuck above. Not the biggest deal. Yo, is it me or are these wedges like super long? I like pulled them out of the pack. Oh, that's twisted. Let me make sure you don't have a twist in the line. a little bit of slack looks good there see how the drop now isn't it below this one should be below as well i don't know if that's a protocol thing or just me being ocd but anyways got our three clamps technically this one could be a bit further out but not a big deal looking good okay i'm gonna head to the next pole all righty
Now we bring it from roadside to field side. We have <laughs> so this makes sense now why it was pulled. We have some weird stuff going on here. So they have good pull transition clamps, which is great. They have another clamp here for the but look at this. The hanger's loose. The drop is tensioned all the way from here. Oh man. <laughs> okay, and this clamp is put on wrong. As you can see that the opening is facing downwards. The opening should only either be left or right. Um, and in this case, it's neither. So, it's funny that they went under the ground here. And they went... Uh, so you can see the mistake that they made here. Hopefully you guys can see this when I'm talking about roadside, field side. So obviously they started from underneath the strand over there. And that's why they got stuck under the pole. Which is no bueno. This is no good. Because at some point, if they have to drop main line or drop the strand, then this gets in the way. That's why you want it above and out of the way. So, they almost had it right. You know, they have good clamp placements. Clamp, 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 as it should be. You guys have seen me do that. But look, you have a drop here that's hanging under the tension of itself, just off of this wedge here. Like, it's essentially being hung all the way from over there. So, look, I can almost remove this. If, here, let me show you guys. If I remove this clamp, nothing happens. See? Look, it's tensioned all the way under here. <laughs> and loose there. So that's no good. Let's see what we can do about fixing it. First off, let's get the clamp placed properly. Which would be with the opening towards the pole. I'm not going to tighten it all the way. Ideally, I want it to be able to slide. That's what I'm looking for right now. So, see if we can, I doubt we'll be able to get this. Nah, no way, that thing's like sealed on. So, let's get this going. Problem is these wedges are so long, they're kind of like in the way. I might have to move this forward. So, let me bend this out of the way. I'm gonna get this as far back as it can go. That looks good there. And then, get it to go into the clamp. Uh, that's not the right orientation. I'm looking for... I'm looking for one of these. Kind of tough when it's already on the... There we go. So that's... That's what I'm looking for there. Now... Let's get mine... On there. this I'm gonna open it up the wedge these wedges are weird they're like already locked there we go so you want to hand tighten as much as you can okay Oh, these wedges are keep locking. I don't like it. Normally I can just loosen the clamp. There we go. Just like that. Okay. So now... Wait, why does it keep... What is happening? It's like not gripping. Okay, that looks good. So, okay, my line is like a foot low. This line is pretty tight, but we have some gap here. So now, I'm going to, let's get this out of the way for now. Look how tight this is. That's crazy. These clamps are also, like, they should be placed a little bit better. Maybe like there. I would have put this clamp here. I'm not sure if I can get that one out. Let's focus on this. So now we can grab the clamp. These drops. 
looks good there. And that's where you want to tighten the clamp. So now we have this here, this here. This is still loose, unfortunately, because there's so much tension here. Can't even pull the tension back. Okay, that's a bit better. Still not ideal, to be honest. This is so stupid. I don't even understand how I got to this. Like a bird nest. Um, I could go with a little bit more. Okay. I'm not sure how much of this I'll keep in, but got here. Clamp was misplaced. Um, these clamps are okay, I guess. Definitely good that there's a transition. And then we have this drop that's just under tension all the way from over here. And ideally, we want to loosen it. But look, it's already standing above the strand. It's so tight. We don't have any wiggle room. So unfortunately, I can't really fix it as well as I'd like to. Um, look at the tension here. That's crazy. It's pretty much tension from there all, all the way to there, like in one go. And it's just kind of being held here. But not much we can do. Again, the drop is above as it should be below. So if I were to open this up, send that drop below. That's something at least. I, I almost want to get it off of this. Good bit of trial and error here. Yeah, I guess just like under so much tension right there. Uh, it's interesting because they had it so close to being right. Like they, they had the right idea with the with the clamp placements and everything so they obviously knew procedure but they they failed them where it's important I'm happier with that somewhat better my this is my line here pretty much right in line go here so now we anchor off let's get this oh man <laughs> Look at that pup. <laughs> Poor doggy, he's bored. Just wants someone to play with. Okay. Pull a little bit of slack. Make sure we're nice and tight. Looks like we're good there. We're just stuck under this stupid branch. That's fine though. Um, just because it's popping up based on the line being stuck there. I'm going to zip tie it here. Uh, not to the strand. Just to the clamp. Just to avoid any risk of it popping out. Not that it would. Okay. Looking good. So this is a proper pole transition. Not the existing one, the new one. We have clamp off the pole. At least a foot, I'd say. In this way, looking about two feet, two feet, and then boom, looks good. This is an ideal. I tried my best to fix it. I can't put the, the clamp further back because this is like hard stuck in there. This is normally how much is stuck, like out, and look look what's left here. It's like half an inch, so it's 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 been under a lot of tension. Uh, okay, let's move forward. I can probably get away with putting the ladder there, so I probably will. And then I'll bring my truck and move everything over. Ah. 
All right. What are we stuck on there? trees oh. oh that tree there's gonna be a pain that branch hmm I might have to get my saw out whoo right there because it's tucked in under. I'm trying to get the drop over. Huh. This is gonna be fun. See this branch here? Stopping the, oh, and the fact that this drop is tangled in it is even worse. Oh man, that's frustrating. So, so right now I'm under and I'm trying to bring oh did I just do it oh I think I did damn I'm good how do I do it There we go. Perfect. I think I'm good. Yeah, nice. I'm free and clear. Okay, so I got past all these branches. Um, let me put a clamp up. Remember the opening towards the slack, aka me, because the tension is that way. I'm gonna keep this nice and loose. I think I'm going to have to move the clamp, that's why. Now we kind of hand tighten it to the point where we think it'll be good. That looks okay there. Oh, damn, these clamps are slipping. I don't like that. Okay, we're pretty low there. Not sure if you guys can see, but we're like three feet down. So if I were to pull this, look, now it's above the strand. Okay, I'm the lower one. Well, that's looking good right there. Perfect. So, in case you guys don't understand, I put this clamp loose back here and then I kind of hand tighten it to where it's like a foot or two low. Because sometimes it can be really hard to put, get the proper tension and then put it on the clamp. So you tension as much as you can, put it on the clamp where it's loose, make sure it's at the end of the clamp so it applies pressure like this and it keeps tension on the strand because if you slide this all the way here then the clamp will just slide so you put it here and then you pull back until it's at the exact height you want keep it tighten it and then make sure you push this in after the fact so it's nice and tight there so now i gotta route the drop over uh to the pole 
and this is on another strand. I actually thought this was self-support. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky because we're switching from like roadside field side, changing direction. So it's something you kind of have to think out a little bit and don't just do haphazardly because uh, it could mess you up. It really isn't that big a deal, I think from this point on because it's private poles. But regardless, I always try to follow protocol as best as I can. So I was gonna anchor and just self-support it from here, but there is strand. So I will go and do that. The question is how to transition. Boom, boom, boom. So let's see what we got. It's kind of tough because my ladder is here, but I'm going to put a clamp here. We'll try something out. We'll see if it works. Clamping on the preforms is kind of like sus, but you do what you can. I don't think this stuff will ever get touched. Let's try that out. And then, ideally, I'd like to transition right to the front from here so that we can stay in front of the pole. If I go this way, then my drop will either stay behind and I'm below, right? So you got to think about where the cable is. Um, so right now I'm above. Let's say I go through here. Okay. I know my ladder's kind of in the way right now, but let's say I go through here and I transition as an example. Let's get a transition. Like that. To the back. I almost screwed up when I ordered this truck because I got the tow mirrors and you could see the ladder on the rack almost hits the tow mirrors. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I'll show you guys a little path. Up there's the baby cows. Boom, 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 boom. So I'm going to set the ladder up at this last pole here and then get my climbing gear into the field. So, see you guys in a sec. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I didn't put the ladder up because there's a lot of trees and stuff, so I'll do that when I come back. Gotta watch out for this electric fence. Buzz, buzz. Uh, I'll go down this way. Got my spurs in hand. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, and there's a bull. And there's mama with the baby cow. Look how cute. <laughs> Little baby. Oh, no way. Oh, really? No way. That's awesome. Salt? Just salt. Put some thick salt on it. Let it rest. Let it pull the moisture off. Usually we like we will get the racks on a big platter. We'll put thick salt on them. Cover them nice and like quite a bit of salt. Because the meat will only absorb as much as it can, right? And it pulls all the moisture. And then put it on charcoal. Slow cook it for about 45 minutes, it should take. Get a nice sear on it. Delicious. I would love to cook it for you. Yeah, the like slow cooked uh, shore ribs are good too. Yeah, do you have a charcoal grill or just the propane? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's how we were raised, right? Like, I live where I live in town. I can't have a charcoal grill because I'm like on the second story with the deck, so it's kind of like a fire risk to have charcoal up there. But I'm looking to move, right? So hopefully, I'll be able to get a place that I can cook up. Oh, alrighty. Uh, yeah, I think we're fine. I want to say hi to him. <laughs> You gonna charge at me? Oh, is that the mom? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Interesting. Curious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Put... Oh, <laughs> damn! It's a fast cow. 
Yeah, and like a herd. Ooh, pulls a little rotten here. Can't get a good footing here. Pole's falling apart. Okay, a little sketched out here, but should be fine. I actually forgot that I wanted to pass the spool over. Hmm. Whew. Rush, unfortunately, I forgot to bring up more clamps. Um, I could get him to get me some clamps. Um, just I don't want to come down and back up since this pull. I'm losing footing here. It's kind of like rotten. Um, just the exterior though. The, the core seems solid. Um, what I'm going to do is actually just put a J-hook right here and then anchor off. Anchor off because again the problem is that I'm stuck field side. And I don't really want to come below the strand. Like Regardless, I don't have clamps, so I could, I could clamp here and then go under. Again, this is a private pole, so it doesn't follow the four clamp kind of protocol. Um, uh. Got one? Do you want to tape it to the line and I'll pull it up? Sure. I'll just, I'll just pull the line up. Line over. Does it look like I cleared over there? Hard to tell. This is a pretty long span. I'm looking at 80 meters. So this is tough when you don't have a the clamp to pull like I was showing you guys before so this you really have to get it to where you want it does that look good? Uh, no, that's bad oh no I don't want to be above it There we go. How's that look? Good? Sweet. Yeah, so I'm like coming with the shit maybe a little bit higher. It's good to me though. And these private poles, as long as we're maintaining height, I'm happy. It would be nice to go with the strand, but it doesn't always work that way. See how this one is a stubby one. It's funny. On, and uh, this is high voltage wire here. So, pardon? No. Just got to get around this somehow. Got through there. Getting shocked would be pretty funny. For you guys, not for me. Whoa. Almost there. Okay. 
Alrighty. Okay. Success. Oh, this guy's too nice helping me out. I'll go grab my stuff. You know, thanks for everything already being done. Okay, Here's the last pole. What are we doing here? Should we put a hook up or clamp? Uh, I think I'm just gonna J hook, make things easier. I want to line up kind of with this line here. Another long span. Oh, that gets heavy. Too low? Okay. There's so much weight on the, the, the wedge here that it gets jammed. It's awkward when the the pole, like the strand is to my back. Normally I try to put the ladder so like I'm beside it. So it's kind of awkward to my back. But I think I'm going to make this one work because I was able to slide it back. Just have to get it on the hook. All right. A bit of trial and error on this one. Fortunately, these wedges, a bit unpredictable. It got fully jammed. I couldn't take it out. So that's unfortunate. Let me tighten this. Okay, so we got the clamp up here. Looks like it's grabbing pretty good. Just want to make sure it's not going to come off. I think we're good. This is probably the sloppiest thing you guys will ever see me do. Fortunately, it's stuck on there. I tried really hard to get it off. It wasn't to the right tension and just kind of screwed the pooch on this one. But it's... It's only an aesthetic thing. It bothers me, but we're good here though. Nice and tight with the strand coming off the hook. So now I'm going to straddle down the pole. Upper line is coming down the pole and it's very messy. It's not done right at all. Do you ever uh, kill the turkeys? Oh yeah. Uh, you eat them? Yeah. Are they really gamey? Yeah, they kind of are. Uh, tough. So, what we do when we do, you eat them in Oh nice. What do you kill them with? A pellet gun? Uh, no, usually a 12 gauge. They're pretty tough birds. I have shot them in the head with a 22. But uh, they keep moving around, so now I tell people if they want to do a turkey. No, don't screw around. Just get a 12 gauge and shoot them through the head. That's fair. <laughs> That's fine. Not a big deal. I've had uh, poles that are just like enveloped in this, and I have to pretty much rip it all down because like I have nothing to attach my line to. Almost there. Oh, that's cool. So coming here to point out a couple deficiencies. For one, they came in on the right side and not the left side as it should. Um, 
they the tracer is kind of meh this conduit isn't stacked all the way up as it should but overall it's not too bad and they only put two screws on the box not the four not really a big fan but to me this is sloppy Check this pool. Did they say they were going to replace it? I didn't hear anything. It doesn't look like it. They has a, a tag on it showing that it's good. Awesome. An integrity tag. Yeah. I know they came out and banged it and listened to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's in pretty good shape. The exterior gets like dried up, but you can tell usually by the base. That pole over there in the middle is starting to rot. I don't think they checked it when they were checking this one. Check that one? Yeah, I think, I think they checked this because there's a transformer on it. Likely. Oh, we did have the transformer change once because it did blow up. Oh yeah? yeah? From like a storm or? I don't know what it was. I know we had one go at the other house when we moved over there. And that was because a robin flew across it and touched its wings on both sides. So, so you got it nice and subtle. Nice. Pretty amazing though, the technology of it. Very. Do you want to grab the uh, taking scissors? Yeah. Ooh. We're sending them home for sure. Awesome. I could even tell you the name of the cow if you want. Yeah, for sure. I'll, gotcha. I'll uh, make sure to honor it. Plus, me. Well, not an old animal, a mature animal, but we've seen years old, but what we typically do with the older ones is we uh, make most of it into burgers, sell that. Is it because it's like like tougher or something? Or? Yeah, um, some people prefer it, but yeah, it's not quite as tender as like a one or two year old animal. Gotcha. But uh, we, um, we keep the better steaks uh, for ourselves and, and short ribs too. We just, Sweet. I'll make sure to send you some pictures <laughs> of, of me grilling it up. We'll salt it for three quarters of an hour or so. And yeah, like we've been even known to salt it overnight, even. Like just kind of let it pull all that moisture out. Um, but uh, yeah, like normally, like we'll salt it in the morning, and then you know, the Argentinians like we either eat like we'll, we'll start grilling at like noon, right? But main dinner is like, at like 10 p.m. Like <laughs> we eat really late, right? So we can kind of just munch throughout the day. But um, yeah, we've been known to like salt it in the morning, and then come come evening, we we start to put on the grill. But yeah, you want to give it at least an hour with the salt. Make sure it's like thick, nice thick sea salt, and let it let it pull that moisture, um, and then. Um, not, not really slow cook, just you don't want to like cook it too fast, right? Like on low, low burning charcoal is what we cook it on, right? And just let it bone first, yep. bone first for a good like 10, 15 minutes and then just start flipping and let it, let it sear everywhere. Elk. Yeah. I've never had, um, I've had elk also buco. Do you know what oso buco is? Like the, I think it's like the thigh, like the the femur or something, like the big bone with the bone bone marrow inside, uh, at the Ainsworth Hot Springs at the restaurant there. I had elk oso buco. It was pretty good. That's the only elk I've ever had. I hear it's good though. Oh, it is. Can't really tell it from beef. I know uh, Joe Rogan likes it. Moose is good too. Moose. Never had moose. Well, I may have had moose jerky once. Three nine zero one four. Our line won't break. Pardon? Our line won't break. No, we should be good, unless the pole breaks. <laughs> Already. That's a whole different creature. Pardon? That's a whole different creature. Yeah. <laughs> Do 
you want another drink? I can get you another drink. I'm good. I'm good. Thank sure. you. I don't want to bother you anymore. Oh, that's not a problem. Appreciate it. Uh, don't I'll... worry about the cream. Sure. Yeah, I can bring it back. Okay. So, but I didn't want them to, I didn't know how long you were going to be for the rest of the day. Yeah, I'm heading home after this, so it should yeah, be okay. But because they're, they're from our freezer and it's at minus 20, so they I can, won't be I, ready to use tonight. If you want it back, just let me know. I can, like, I'm up here in the North Shore. I'll bring it back. No problem. This is a nice cooler, though. It, it's it's great because it's like nice. beer size. Sweet. Um, <laughs> no kidding. So many cooters. Like, I have no problem with you adopting that one. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Not often I get uh, such treat. some nice treats from the customers. Well, hopefully you'll... Usually they blame me for all this stuff that's not in my control. So it, I appreciate you it's you understanding that it's not my fault. It's not your fault. It's, uh, we appreciate how many times you've been out and looked at things. And things. <sighs> that's why I feel guilty because I feel like it should have just been done earlier. But well, I mean, they didn't tell you didn't have you didn't. <laughs> and I mean the day you came out and the day before the guys had been out from Prince George. I mean we didn't even know they were coming or anything. Yeah. Well, it's good now. So. Enjoy your short ribs. Thank you very much. Safe travel. Yes, thank you. These are some of the nicest customers I've ever had. They just gave me some short ribs. Ooh. Probably have some gnarly hard hat hair, but okay, we finished this job, it's all good to go. Um, kind of an awkward one because the underground portion had been complete completed prior. I already pointed out some of the deficiencies that I found here. Um, nothing too detrimental, but again, just for learning sake, right? So you show you guys. <sighs> Sorry, a bit out of breath. Just put the ladder away. Um, yeah, the, the drill work was done pretty cleanly. Can't really see any kind of trace of it. And uh, these guys decided to up for an LB instead of a nib. Comes up to here, and the fibers left in there with the tracer, so looks good. Give you guys a quick look at the, the path from this side over the pond, two ponds actually. And then we got a cow right here, the bull. Oop. So cute, and then you got the baby cow over there. Alrighty. Well, this has been another Drop of Fibers. I hope you learned something. Make sure to like and comment and drop that sub. I'm taking this clip after the fact, just for those of you wondering, I feel like I'm gonna get asked what it looks like in the LB or what this uh, this portion is, because normally it goes into a nib. Uh, this is more like Alberta style on uh, here in Canada. In BC, we normally go into a nib because in Alberta, a lot of times these go directly in. But uh, there you go. So it's left cold here. Not really a big fan, tight radius there, not the best for the fiber, but it definitely will survive. And then you got your tracer here. It looks like they tried to locate it or something, but yeah, that's kind of how it's left. Um, overall, it looks like it's okay. And then the tech can just make an entry hole through there. Normally, I would. They looks like they cut off the back of the LB because it sticks out about that much. I would actually make like the one inch hole so that it sets in properly. But yeah, there you go. Job's all done.